All right, I'm exhausted from raving. <laughs> I'm going to kind of semi-stand up, but then I'm like horny. I don't know what that guy's doing. The guy's like, I'm going to get a fucking spear. Because this guy behind me who's horny is he's closing in. <laughs> so weird. Um, and, then the, and then the guy at the front's like, well, you guys sort the shit out. We're evolving. We've got clothes now. We've got technology. We are in control of every other species. And what we're seeing is this incredible, as I said, human fingerprints. And when you think about that, and you, and, and you think about if you're on a little spaceship, and you're consuming and producing, at some point you've got to stack it somewhere. And our oceans cover 70-odd you know, percent of our planet, 72 percent of our planet. And we should be called planet ocean. And what we've looked at it as is a total place to just get away, something out there. And so in 2006, I read a report about accumulation of plastics in our ocean. And people think about it as this island. It's not an island. It's subsurface, molecular-sized pieces of plastic that basically photodegrade. If you go back to plastic as a material, it was 1853, I think, that the Academy here was founded. Two years later, in 1855, Alexander Parks created Parksine, which was the first thermoset, or the first thermoplastic, Parksine, <laughs> named after himself. And then, at the end of the 1800s, you had um, Leo Hendrik Bakelin, who created basically a uh, photographic paper called Velex. Velex was allowing photographers to use artificial sunlight instead of sunlight to create um, photographic paper. And he sold that to Eastman Kodak for a million bucks. He took his million bucks, he went with his wife, they went to New York, and he started synthesizing a material called shellac. Shellac at the time was being used as an insulator, it was like explosion electricity, it was the turn of the 1900s. And he created Bakelite. Bakelite was the first fully synthetic plastic, 1907 it was first introduced. And ever since that point, in 1907, whether it was the early 1900s, you had nylon, it was 19, you know, probably 40s, or you had PT, you had styrofoam in the 50s, you had your first plastic bag in the 60s. It was 1978 that plastic production overtook steel production in the US. So every single bit of plastic that's ever been produced is somewhere on our planet, ever. It doesn't disappear. Spaceship Earth doesn't leave the capsule, ever incinerated in our atmosphere, in our capsule. We are in a capsule right now. It's brilliant. Um, 